Welcome back to Short Simple Science. Food chains are a huge part of ecosystems and are today's topic. Food chains show how energy is transferred through an ecosystem. Energy is needed to do work or cause change. Energy is needed for organisms to move, grow, digest food, and so on. Ever notice when you're hungry, your body is just a lot slower in functioning? You are low in energy. The path of energy flow through an ecosystem always starts with the sun. It is the source of all energy. The organisms that make up food chains are divided into two main categories, producers and consumers. Producers use energy from the sun through photosynthesis to make sugar, which is energy. All plants, therefore, are producers and come next in a food chain after the sun. Consumers are animals and they get their energy from eating other organisms. There are four types of consumers. Herbivores, which only eat plants. Carnivores, that only eat meat. Omnivores, that eat both plants and meat. And lastly, scavengers, that eat dead organisms. The last piece of a food chain is an arrow, and is actually very important. Arrows are used in food chains to show the direction energy flows. For example, when you eat chicken, you get the energy from it. So the arrow would point from the chicken to you. Now that we know all the pieces, let's create a food chain. Like I said before, it always starts with the sun. Next, a producer will use the sun's light to make sugar through photosynthesis, which it will use for energy. I'm going to pick carrots. Carrots get energy from the sun, so our arrow will point towards the carrot. Next, a gopher, which is a herbivore, is going to eat our carrot and get the energy. A fox is an example of an omnivore and will eat gophers, gaining energy from them. The fox is then eaten by a wolf, which is a carnivore, and that arrow will follow the energy going from the fox to the wolf. When the wolf dies, a scavenger, such as a vulture, will eat the meat. Here is our final food chain. Food chains show energy transfer from one organism to another. But is this the most realistic view of what is happening in an ecosystem? A fox doesn't only eat gophers, just as a vulture doesn't only eat dead wolves. A food web is useful to see more of what is happening in an ecosystem. A food web is a connection of food chains with many energy paths. Looking at our example, a vulture will eat any of these animals once they're dead to gain energy. As mentioned before, a fox is an omnivore, so also would eat the carrot. We can also add other organisms to our food web that would be in this ecosystem. Grass would also gain energy from the sun, and a cow would eat that grass then wolves or vultures might eat that cow. Now we have a food web. While we made a food web from our food chain, you can also pick out food chains from a food web. Looking at this food web, start with the sun of course, and then follow a path of arrows. That will be one path of energy transfer or a food chain. I can go from the sun to seeds, to bird, to snake, and then to an eagle. There are several different food chains you can create from this one food web. You can see how food webs can be a bit messier than food chains with lots of organisms and arrows, but they are useful for seeing multiple energy paths while food chains are useful when focusing on one. Now, choose one of your favorite animals and create your own food chain and food web.